James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Yeah, okay. We're here, and you're there. Well, hopefully you're there, because you wouldn't be watching us if you weren't there. Seven lucky bells for our show, progressive discussions. Um, I would like to start off the show with a moment of silence um, for the death of uh, someone that I knew personally, uh, WWE le uh, superstar legend, uh, Superfly Jimmy Snooker, pass passing away recently. Uh, I believe he was 73 oh, my goodness. years old. Um, he had uh, health problems. Of, ah. you know, he was in hospice. I believe he had cancer. Yeah. Uh, they didn't... I'm glad uh, everything was resolved with his court case because the judge knew that the man was going to enter hospice and he did the right thing because it would have been absolutely absurd to do otherwise. Um, but anyway, a moment of silence. Uh, we, um, I have uh, gone uh, with, a, with a group of friends uh, from pro wrestling and along with Superfly Jimmy Snooker, we have uh, attended a very nice um, Memorial. Uh, a, a, a Japanese sushi lunch buffet. I, I have fond memories of that, where we all had lunch together. And uh, he also sat next to me at a, um, with his uh, uh, older daughter uh, at a, uh, a wedding reception for a uh, independent circuit promoter, a big promoter on the uh, in the Northeast. Okay, and uh, he was he sat next to me, and you know. Uh, it's sad. Also, um, the death of uh, Jaime the Robot from Get Smart, Mr. Dick Godier. He was in his low 80s. He uh, died also. Um, but any any other famous deaths that uh, you can recall? There were a bunch of them, but uh, you know. All right, moment of silence for Superfly Jimmy Snuka. Um, Mostly, primarily, because I, I, uh, he, I knew him, and uh, uh, Dick Odier I didn't know, but, you know, I definitely used to watch Get Smart when I was a kid. Chisler's Hall of Shame. Where are we? All right. I've done similar Chisler's Hall of Shames like this before. You know, it's 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 the new packaging with American food companies. You know, uh, since corporate America loves to downsize, but never lower their prices. <laughs> Um, it started out, I believe, with coffee. You know, at, at one time everything was 16 ounces, and then oh, they started yeah. shrinking. And sh ice cream, when I was a kid, uh, it used to be a half gallon. <laughs> my uh, 48 ounces. My grandfather used to tell my grandmother uh, that he got uh, some ice cream, and uh, it was mighty big compared <laughs> to the containers now. And I've done shows about that. You know, I showed the. Uh, nationally advertised brand. Now in this case we have Ronzoni pasta. Okay, most of America, unless you live in the mm. mountains off the grid, uh, have heard of Ronzoni. Okay. Um, this one is the healthy... Harvest. Get my glasses. 
Healthy Harvest 100% Whole Grain Rotini. Rotini? It looks like the Spirillo uh, or whatever. All natural. Well, what else is it going to be? If it's 100% whole grain, naturally it's all natural. <laughs> it's like when, 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 when they started <clears throat> promoting um, um, uh, oat bran, you know, uh, uh, the... Uh, the benefits of, of consuming Oprah and they would say on the box no cholesterol well of course there's no cholesterol it, uh, cholesterol is only found in animal foods animal source foods not in vegetable every little you know American uh, 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 retail and food industry which is like retail because you know they have a, a wholesale price and then they have this uh, uh, questionable manufacturers suggested retail selling price you know which could be anything they pull out of a hat it's all the same you know and they and they use uh, little white lies little fibs <laughs> which is really a lie no matter how you look at it deception okay here oh wow non GMO project verified non-gmoproject.org dot org dot right. org it's an organization right? All right. excellent source of fiber naturally 56 uh, 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 grams of whole grains per serving now look at what it says on top alright on the bottom I saw oh wow blast from the past on the bottom it says 16 ounces one pound hey Okay, which Pretty is good. which is great. I said, "Wow, look at this." Then my sister pointed this out to me. On top, it says now thirty-three percent, thirty-three percent more free. So what? Uh, so yeah. Uh, uh, so they're uh, doing you a big freaking favor. Yeah, they're, they're from yeah. The, they're making it sound like, hey, don't get used to this. Yeah, well, yeah, don't get used to it. <laughs> So, it's our gift to you, buddy. Our gift to yeah. you. Meanwhile, for decades, a pasta has always been 16 ounces, and you can still find certain brands yeah, like well, Luigi Vitelli. But what they're doing is they're giving you 33% more of the whatever they had, like I, maybe 48 ounces or something. And I bet they jacked up the and, prices. And it goes to a pound. <laughs> Come on. It's like, hey, it's like um, uh, clothing in retail. The suit is on sale for just one day. Let's take Dude, Mace, Macy's, uh, the famous Macy's one day sale. Well, they just jack up the retail price before the big sale. So you think you're getting 30% off, 20% off, but you're not. It's deception. So the big favor Ronzoni is doing for you is they're giving you, I repeat, they're giving you 33% more free which it's supposed to be a pound anyway. Yeah. But, but it's a gift to you. Yeah, sure. It's bullshit. I guess you can see the box. Yeah. Ronzoni, horseshit. Thirty-three percent more free, from the bottom of their heart to the consumer. <laughs> hey, they're gonna get away with what they can get away with. Um, when you have um, conservatives in control. They don't, even though they're crooks, they don't, uh, businesses um, don't like regulations. They, they want the um, option of be a, to be able to screw you mm -hmm. and lie to you mm -hmm. and uh, give you a big cock and bull story. They want to make a buck any way they can. Like, I'm sure you're going to see, uh, as we're approaching the St. Valentine's Day Massacre Day, I'm sure you're going to see advertisements from fine jewelry about the stupid chocolate diamonds. Oh, chocolates. Chocolate diamonds. Ooh, the women get all excited. Ooh, chocolate. Mm. Hey, I bet the the brown diamonds being mined are a dime a dozen. The, the, the diamond itself is not a precious gemstone. So, it's a bunch of capitalist retail bullshit. So, uh, that's that. Oh, anyway, anyway, this is the post... Donald Trump inauguration show. Um, I did not watch it. Uh, I, I've seen articles online that said he lied. Mm -hmm. 
during the inauguration or he, he I, I, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> listen you know you judge a person by the fruits they bear mm -hmm. well his cabinet picks are pretty rotten fruits falling off of his tree because now he's under the He's under the thumb of the Republican Party, and these are the people they want in charge. In other words, in other words, he kowtowed to them, so the right wing vote, so the party would get right behind him. Right. Because after the debates, the party wasn't too crazy about him. They weren't well, very. Yeah. This is there's yeah. there's two sections of the party. They weren't fond of him. There's the 35% that are the uh, boobs in Kentucky, and then there's the other ones which are the establishment. These are establishment candidates. The elitist Republicans. Right. The, uh, representing the party, not, not, the, not the redneck uh, brain no. cell deficient teabaggers. No, 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 no. These are the elitists, uh, the creme de la creme. These are the ones that hate the uh, department they are going to be put in. The hens, I mean the, the, the fox guarding the hen house. And that's what you That's have. what these are. These picks, yeah. these selections are all foxes guarding the hen yeah, house. That's right. And I guess he had a kowtow to the people that uh, Yeah, because he didn't know much about them. Provided that's the support. Funny. Unfortunately, he's, I don't know if he, he's forced to take advice from these right-wing assholes. Now he is, yeah. You know, like uh, climate change denial mm -hmm. and um, that 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 woman. Uh, was she in charge of uh, health? DeVos. Yeah, that that blonde. No, public schools. Public schools. Department of Education. And then you got that that which that she hates, by the way. Evangelical. That's the uh, yeah, yeah, she hates public education. There you go. Uh, well, all Republicans are not fond of public education. And guess who got put in, uh, in charge? Uh, what? I don't think he. No, he's not signed up yet. Jeff Sessions. Believe. No, Perry, Department of Energy, which he couldn't remember last time. Oops, you know. Uh, thirty, thirty. I'm from Texas. Excuse me. Uh, third, third. Department of uh, what was that department again? Uh, was it uh, at uh, Nordstrom's or was it Bloomingdale's? Uh, what department? Department of Commerce and Department of something else, and then the Department of uh, 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 Oops, <laughs> Oops, woo -hoo. you know, I mean, um, yeah, the fox is guarding the hen house, and uh, <laughs> you know, they I heard they removed um, any mention from the government website uh, in Washington uh, that any mention of climate change was removed, and. Uh, uh, um, you know, uh, hey, listen, anything that's important to the planet, the poor, and what it comes down to, really, Main Street, the middle class, is put on not only the back burner, it's swept under a carpet miles away. No burner. <laughs> no burner. <There> Removed <laughs> from the website. Um, I think they just want to dumb down the population so we become uh, so desperate that we we take any job for any pay become enslaved with no benefits that's what it's all about they want to they want to e eliminate the middle class by what what did trump do according to the articles i read he raised property taxes on the middle class or he raised middle class he didn't do the taxes yet well then, then it's propaganda. Well then it's propaganda. Uh, or, it's propaganda uh, because he, online they article. didn't do the taxes yet. So they have him doing things he hasn't done yet. Somebody does. And what the hell would he have to do with property taxes? They are a local issue. They're local. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I gotta admit, amongst the amongst liberal progressives, there are the ones that have sanity. Uh, you know, like Debbie over there, uh, in in the she calls her organization uh, sane progressives. You know, uh, uh, Sank Iker of the Young Toiks. Uh, you know, uh, intelligent, 
uh, Jill Stein, you know, people with their heads screwed on, right? Then you have uh, liberal progressives, progressive liberals, whatever they want to be called. Then you have the fanatics, like the, the vegans that will scold you for wearing leather shoes or having a leather wallet, or they'll scold you for consuming dairy products. Uh, you have the nuts, the extremists, because I won't use that other word with the R. No. The extremists uh, uh, would be like your neoliberals that, that see nothing wrong with the DNC. <laughs> Well, which is a big joke. There was a there was a whole bunch of oh, um, Bernie's trying to still trying to save the DNC, the Democratic Party. Bernie Sanders. I don't know why, but there was a whole bunch of women in the march today. Now they mm -hmm. were at the micro microphone, and Kristen Gillibrand was there, oh, and uh, several other um, government people. But she's in New York State. And guess who was still there? Who? Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Oh, she's still relevant? I thought she was done with. Who the hell wants to? Finito. A, you know, she... There she, she was. She would, di she would discredit the... Um, yeah. The women's uh, march and protest because she is one of the culprits that corrupted the DNC in, in, in regards to rigging the primaries against Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. So for her to show her big hawk nose is not a good thing for the, uh, and her for the woman's march. A little over from Annie Hare. Now what does she, ha well, listen, I know she's got feminism, feminism in her because, um, you know, um, you know they made Bernie San Bernie Sanders in the in the debates uh, out to be this this mean old ogre, this mean old man, is right. picking on Hillary. You know, and they, and they started playing the gender card. I know they played the gender card with that. And uh, but I'm not. I, I'm also blaming the people that didn't even focus on Bernie Sanders content they they automatically supported Hillary Clinton like the Southern blacks the gays and lesbian community because um, you know for personal reasons um, and um, they, they just didn't see the reality uh, of the fact that the Clintons uh, Barack Obama, uh, most of the Democrats in Washington are establishment, uh, blue dog, uh, if you want to call them centrists, I don't even call them that. I think a lot of them are just flat out corporate, corporate whore sellouts, corporatists, you know, and not, and see the reality that Bernie Sanders has something to, has a lot more to bring to the table for the poor and middle class, <laughs> including gays and lesbians yeah. and minorities. Yeah. women, uh, 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 young people in college, everybody, old people. Bernie Sanders had the most to bring to the table out of all the candidates on, in the Republicans, Democrats, and Independents, lock, stock, and barrel. He had the most to bring to the table. And you saw the people that showed up at his rally. Now, yes, he did make a big mistake. To endorse Hillary Clinton. He could have ran as an independent. He didn't have to jump on board with Jill Stein. He had the, he had the mass, the masses, the asses of the masses. I mean, you know, he could have turned around and said, well, we, we kind of knew that the DNC was not going to nominate me, but uh, in re uh, uh, regardless of that, I am still running, uh, but uh, not as a Democrat. I can almost guarantee that all the all the legions would follow Bernie and support him as a as an independent on the ballot. Yeah, but the problem is, if you look back at these things, you see that Obama promised uh, that the people would take back the government, and then Trumpy promises that the people will take back the government. Yeah, but, uh, but guess what happens? Yeah. 
They never do because the elitists have total control of the government. Well, Obama's the one that signed that law where he can have you arrested and detained without a trial if he suspects anything. Yeah, the NA, NA, what was that? The they gave it a nice name. Yeah, the National, uh, what do you call it? Uh, In other words, you have, if we suspect anything of you or from you, you have no rights. Exactly. You don't get a trial. Exactly. You don't. You don't pass go and collect two hundred dollars. You, 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 we. we you no, do, you go to work in prison. You make you disappear. Yeah, you become you slave do. labor. Yeah. Right. That's why they probably probably why they love to keep marijuana. Oh yeah. Illegal, the right wing, because that that those are more more slave labor for the privatized prisons. That uh, fulfills the old Nixon uh, Nixon thing of getting the. The poor, uh, stupid blacks off the streets. Okay, that's what they decided to do. Well, well, they have disdain for all poor. Yes, uh, the right wing wealthy. Because they're all yeah. moochers. They're moochers. Actually, if you're if you're in the womb, you're number one in their eyes. But once you're born, you're a moocher. Yeah. Well, if you're not born with a silver spoon in your mouth, yeah, well, you're a moocher, you, man. Once you want something. Ooh. Or need something, need. forget about it. Need and want. That baby's a moocher. Yep. Uh, put him to work. Yeah, but he's a, he's only a newborn. I don't so care. So well, we can put him in a janitor's in the schools. Come on. New you King heard Newt Gingrich. Newt Gingrich, yeah. <laughs> uh, women uh, raising children, single mother women on food stamps. He wanted to take their kids and make janitors out of them. <laughs> hey, doesn't that remind you? of the uh, child labor during the Industrial Revolution with J.P. Morgan and Carnegie and of course they were had they had child labor you know before unions oh, yeah way before unions. yeah because child labor is like saying slave labor <laughs> it, 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 it's a it's right there right and uh, let's say you um, you accumulate a lot of student debt right and now you have a, a marketable skill like this right-wing jerk-off was telling me, a hey, marketable skill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Guess what? When you graduate, you got all that debt. Now you find out that your job was uh, uh, taken. You were replaced by an H-1B imported professional from another country that is willing to work El Cheapo. Mm -hmm. Now, guess what? You can't get that entry-level job and you have that student debt. Right. And uh, the lack of uh, a job market and the bad economy is simply uh, due to the fault of our uh, so-called uh, moochers, I mean leaders, uh -huh. leaders. Um, oh, I just want to state that uh, I started this new series. It's not a steady series. Mm. It's whenever I feel inspired. What? It is called Progressive Discussions After Dark where I go solo after dark and, and the video is quite dark ah. and I uh, give my little uh, spiel on things things uh, whatever whatever inspires me whatever whatever uh, you know uh, uh, I figure others are doing it you know others are doing it like Debbie of, of the same progressive but I don't uh, I don't I don't sugarcoat anything I don't get um, all bubbly you know like a metrosexual man I don't get effervescent like Debbie does but she's a woman you know she gets very emotional and you, well even Sank of the Young Turks you know he talks fast and um, that's a new thing now all these young people talk, talk like they're all, uh, they're loaded with caffeine he talks fast and he tries to get cute and bubbly. No, no, I, I like to give you the real hard-hitting truth. And and if you can't understand it, I'll make you digest it. I'll make you absorb it like a sponge because it's tough love. Mm. But anyway, that's enough of that. Mm. Okay, let, uh, mm. um, let, oh, yes, 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 yes. I was, um, I wanted to do a search on YouTube because you never know what you're going to find. I, uh, I did a search of how, if it's possible, to sharpen razor blades. 
that you buy in a store. It could be the expensive rip-off uh, multi-blade shaver, or it can be like the what, what I use, the old-fashioned double-edged safety razor. Stainless steel thing that opens up when you turn. Doesn't regardless. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a way to sharpen it, and the blades. The people have used the same blade for many months, sometimes over a year. What you do is, you get a piece of denim. Like, let's say you got an old pair of jeans, you don't throw it out. You cut the leg off. Get a piece of denim. You, you flatten it out on, on a table. Pretend this is a, a, a razor blade. Here's the handle. Billy, Billy, look at me. What, what, yeah, but what is the, ra what is the thing? Uh, no, 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 no. It's a shillelagh. No, I don't want to. I mean, the, the razor blade. You're talking about the razor blade. The razor blade. blade. Now put the razor blade Any down. Any razor on, blade. Put it down on the table. You, you got the denim. What am I looking at? You look, you're, you're, you're picturing in your mind. I know the people on YouTube demonstrated it, but it's really, it's not rocket science. It's a no-brainer. Okay, but you it's put, denim. You put the piece of denim, denim. material. Material, yes. That they make blue jeans out of, okay. regardless where you got it. Yes. You lay it flat on a table. Okay. Let's say it's it's a, the table up right by, here right now, by yeah. your desk. I got it right here. Pretend this is a, a razor, any razor. Here's the handle, here's the blades. Okay. Even though it's a shillelagh. That's a blade. You put it down on the denim. On the denim. This is after it gets dull. You put it down on the denim and you you push it forwards across stroke stroking it forwards across the denim not not Back. backwards like if you shaved against the grain not yeah, that way no, you no, push no. it away away from you on against the denim and that is how they sharpen their using denim razor blades Using denim, you're stroking the denim with the blade away from you. What about the rubber strap the barber uses? Well, that's where this principle comes from. Yes, that's what I'm because saying. Because the strap, when you just picture the the straight razor going against the leather strap in slow motion, it is not going against the blade. It is going this way and that way, this way. And that way, so it is the same motion as you going away from you against the denim. Okay, you could look it up on YouTube for those of you that have to see the fucking video Yay. of the person stroking the denim. You got a visual, you know. If you can't picture what I'm showing you, you know you got problems. You bunch of dunces if you don't get what I'm showing you. But anyway, pushing away from you against the denim. All right, we got that. All right. Whew. Anyway, I learn something new all the time. You never stop learning. Hopefully. Oh, really, even if you have uh, college degrees, it goes on and on and on and on until until the, uh, the worms get you. Republicans stop at some stage. Yeah, they're, they're very, um, you know, uh, their 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 brain capacity is stunted. Now, like for instance, today, um, oh. and yesterday too, at the inaugural. Right. Uh, I believe they had uh, three, three or four, probably only three, different, um, let's say, religious organizations uh, offer prayers at the inaugural. Oh, what a joke! And today. Uh, Old Trumpy boy was at a uh, national prayer meeting, let me, and there let were me about, guess. there there was a Jew, there was a what you would call a Protestant, there was a a a a, 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 a Krishna. <laughs> what is this joke? And what is that supposed to accomplish? And they're all they're all worshiping the same God. Well, Give me well, a the, steak and bread. Well, the people in Donald Trump's cabinet are are a light years away from being a true uh, oh, Mr. person Pence. of the faith. Let's Mr. That way. Pence thinks he is. Well, Mr. Sessions thinks he is too. And uh, Mr. Sessions. When the, when he said a stupid thing like uh, 
uh, the separation of church and state is unconstitutional. How how ignorant, how stupid it, that that is. That was one of the, the, the one of the concepts that the forefathers put into law mm -hmm. is to keep and how can church you come up state. with the idea that God in his infinite wisdom prefers one race over another God never said oh we we I like light skinned people uh, uh, um, uh, uh, and I like prod I like evangelicals and Baptists and southern uh, you know redneck uh, white yeah. Uh, uh, so-called Christians better than everybody else. He and never the, said that. And the only reason that he favored Israel was because he wanted Israel to do a job for him. Right. Which they failed to do. And how do you know Brigham Young really spoke to uh, Jesus? Well, we know he didn't. The Mormons. Because I'm telling you. The Mormon Pumpernickel Choir. If there is a God, and they haven't, none of them proved that he exists. So if there is a God. None of them proved it yet. He will be the first religion. Well, he's You're not going to wait thousands of years to come up with a Brigham Young meeting Moroni, the angel. Yeah, Boney Moroni, this, yeah. And uh, this or, sort of or is it Brigham Young or Robert Young? Brigham. Okay, or, that's an actor. Or even a Mohammed. At six, uh, at six ten, I believe. Six ten. Listen, me, you know, uh, 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 starting a religion. This is the most stupidest thing ever. Listen, the religious people, religious uh, um, um, people uh, of the faith, uh, you know, that have made a career out of their religion, the ones that really do great things like help the poor, feed the poor, clothe the poor, take care of sick poor, you know, like like when uh, Mother Teresa was alive and she dedicated her life to helping the poor. You know, somebody, it, it could be a, a Buddhist, could be it anybody. could be a Dalai Lama, yeah, right, exactly. Hmm. You know, a person who does, who proves who they are by their actions. If they're out there, could be an atheist. That's right. It could be an atheist that that is philanthropical, for uh, uh, that is really philanthropical, that that goes out there and actually helps people. Not Joel Osteen getting a bigger mansion, you know, uh, or a bigger uh, 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 limousine. Uh -huh. I'm talking about people that do that walk the walk. They don't just talk the talk. Yeah. And those people are, I'm sure, feel that. Their God is all-inclusive. I never hear people like that going around saying, uh, you know, oh, uh, he likes us us folks out here in Tibet and the Himalayas. He don't like anybody else. Yeah. He, yeah. he don't really care about you. He only cares about us in the Himalayas. And, and, no. I never hear them say anything like that. When you hear talk like that, you know that those people have created God in their image. Right. That's why the artisans during the Renaissance period, everybody was very Caucasian looking with blonde hair, blue eyes, and very light skin. Hey, you know in the Catholic Church, you ever hear the infant Jesus of Prague, che Czechoslovakia? It's a statue of a blonde haired, blue eyed, very light skinned baby Jesus dressed in a king's robe with a king's crown on his head. Yeah. That's what they call that. Well. Well, how do they know? First of all, nobody knows what he looked like. First of all, Jesus was born uh, a Jew in a humble, not only a Jew, that he could have had brown skin and a big nose. He, absolutely, he could. Hey, and it was he was humble. He wasn't. They didn't put him in a king's robe, in a, in a king's robe with, with jewels and 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 a, and a, and, a, and, a, and a gold jeweled crown on his head. Maybe Herod's, he maybe in, Herod's offspring had that. He was that. in swaddling clothes. Right. <laughs> he was wrapped, wrapped up in swaddling clothes. But the Europeans made him into royalty. They did the same thing with images of, the, of Virgin Mary. They put a crown on her head. Mary's ascension into heaven, they called it, right? Yeah, and they, Mary and Mary and those in that religion over there is the queen of heaven. 
Yeah. And they got a crown. And, and, and you're praying to her. And the but artist. She's dead. The artist has a crown on her head. Yeah. <laughs> but they prayed to her. <laughs> you and mean she's like, dead. She's like, in the grave. Like she's a deity. Exactly. Because <laughs> that religion uh, is an offshoot of, of course, the Babylonian mystery religion. Is and that anything like the Magical Mystery Tour by the Beatles? Yeah. Magical Mystery yeah, Tour. Yeah, yeah. Wah, wah. That's a recent invention. The Magical Mystery. I'm only kidding. The only recent I'm only j yeah. joking with you. Hey, a little levity bells. <clears throat> we do have a sense of humor here. All unplanned, unscripted wit. Just old-fashioned wit. Multi-talented, superior human beings. Here. Slim Whitman. What? Slim Whitman. He saw he sold more albums than the Beatles in in England. I don't know about now. The Yodeling Cowboy, Slim Whitman. Yodeling. Hey, you do that good. Why don't you do some yodeling westerns? Because you have before I do singing and uh, yodeling and stuff, you have to go through a session of. Bringing your voice into, you know. Hey, remember that? And I ain't doing that. Remember, besides right the, the boxcar Willie commercials, <laughs> remember the harmonic cats? Yes, remember sir. the midget? He had a huge the harmonic. Big, it big. looked like it was as big as him, and he's trying to play. Yeah, the big quarter. As a kid, I remember it was Saturday afternoon. <clears throat> you saw all these commercials. I mean, funny as hell. These are in the, in the days when He Haw was on TV. And so on and so forth, and all those great cartoons, and the uh, old school pro wrestling shows, and uh, the Three Stooges, and so on and so on and so on. Channel A Nine, Abbott and Costello uh, uh, TV series. Anyway, let us anyway. Sink, let us sink our teeth into these readings, and I have a feeling that you might have some readings on the inauguration, possibly. Possible. We'll see what we Magical get to. Magical mystery tour. We'll see what we get to here. Every week on number the one of discussions is a magical mystery tour. Regarding be fair to President Trump, <clears throat> I wholeheartedly disagree with the letter. Wholeheartedly. We need the press more than ever. We now have a president who started his campaign tearing down the media and has used fake news to his advantage. Since announcing his candidacy, he's done nothing but try to whittle down our democracy. From his horrific behavior and worrisome cabinet choices to his unprecedented loyalty to Russia over our own intelligence community. We, as Americans, should be alarmed and need to stay engaged. It's because of his actions that we need the Trump tracker in the first place. People who think of us as sore losers don't seem to understand that it goes way deeper than that. We are afraid for our country and at what the next four years will be. We are counting on the media to not only keep us informed, but to continue to take a hard look at his administration and make them accountable. Our democracy depends on it. Yeah, gee, when was the last time politicians were held accountable for anything? Never. <laughs> <laughs> All of the people of the United States, every one of us, young, middle-aged, mm -hmm. or in our later years, must mm -hmm. come together for our new 45th president, Donald J. Trump. Well, you know what the J stands for? What? John. Oh, I never knew that. I, I thought you were going to... No joking, funny. no joking. Joking aside. Uh, uh, they come together, but they should also hold his feet to the fire when he gets out of, out of line. Coming together is for the sake of our wonderful country, as well as a personal option. 
it hasn't been so wonderful. We all need to thrive, be it through education, work related, or social. You turn your back on the veterans, you're not wonderful. Having negative thoughts and expressing them is very detrimental to our well being. This guy's a Pollyanna. Please let us band together to keep America and its people great. Here we go. He's a flag waving, she bagging, she. She's a Pollyanna and she's a flag waving uh, teabagger. She must have believed all the malarkey she read in school and in history books. Or she must have believed all the malarkey that Mr. Trump spilled out. She's, she's from uh, Hasbrook Heights. What do they call? What do they call that? Well, it's a snooty town anyway. It's right next to us. Very snooty. Uh, the pedestrians when you when you stop for them. They take their sweet-ass time to cross from one corner to the next because they know they have the right of way, but they milk it. They do that in all rich towns uh, in um, Bergen County, in uh, New Jersey. Uh, that's how they are. They're, so what she what she represents is um, American exceptionalism. Well, she's a Republican. They're great, great, we're great, we're great, we're she great. She just wants you. To, yeah, she just wants you to don't give them a hard time. Fuck her. <laughs> like that douchebag that uh, that uh, spoke to Bernie Sanders in um, in Wisconsin, to, saying that I, I stopped listening to you when you uh, mentioned uh, free college education for all, that that it was absurd or something. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, old bag. What an old bag. But she, it's not for the European countries, is it, or the Scandinavian countries? We're the only country. Not absurd for them, is it? We're the only country left in the world that doesn't guarantee uh, uh, health care and education as rights. Mm -hmm. What about Cuba? You heard what the new uh, health uh, secretary said to Bernie Sanders when he when Sanders tore him a new asshole in in the Senate. He he says, uh, "Oh, those other countries you talk about, they there are." Um, there are drawbacks to their uh, um, universal health care. There are certain draw yeah drawbacks. So really? what? Drawbacks. Drawbacks. I'll tell you one good thing about them. They don't have to pay for armies and navies and and, and air forces. And the rich all pay their fair share in taxes. You know. In those countries in Northern Europe. They, they pay. Now, uh, when we go to lunch, I'm going to show you a Twitter conversation, and one of the gentlemen is from Northern Europe, and he explains the good points, the detailed uh, uh, positive points uh -huh. of a, a single-payer universal health care in, in a democratic socialist system. And he goes into detail because some arrogant American teabagger uh, started name calling, mm -hmm. and this man laid out. This European gentleman laid out all the details, and you're going to see it. You're going to read it, and uh, including, I think, well, you're going to the see Democrats that voted against Bernie Sanders. You're uh, going to see an explosion. Uh, aff affordable pharmaceuticals for for low income people. Yeah. Oh, you're going to see an explosion yeah. but when they repeal. Obamacare and have nothing to replace it with. Well, they don't have anything to replace it with. Well, yeah, and that's when it's going to be an explosion. The coming. plan is a, is a blank sheet of uh, Their uh, plan paper. behind everything they do is privatization. Well, and privatization doesn't work. When a doctor, let's say you fall down with a heart attack in front of a doctor's door or something of that nature. You got insurance? And the doctor can say something of that nature. Hey, to you! Him. You got insurance. You're you dying on my sidewalk. Right. You got insurance, buddy. And he you got can, money. And he can leave you there. You got a problem. Okay. Well, that's, that's a problem. That's what they do in like Columbia, South America. Exactly. If you 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 need to go to the emergency room and you got insurance, you got money. No, no, die outside. That's it. And 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 that is what the Republican overall plan is to, pri to when they privatize everything it means 
you that if you don't if you don't have the money out you of pocket, you don't get it anything. It. You don't get it. You don't get the service. You don't get anything. No. No. No compassion either. No. You know, you, you get nothing. Now that That's Donald it. Trump has been inaugurated and seeks to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, my idea would be to include every citizen from birth to death in Medicare. Medicare has worked successfully for those of us beyond 65. And if modified, it can work successfully for everyone. So why should people have to wait until 65 to get decent health insurance? Why, why should families, and including their children, that are, that are of um, lower income, why should they do it out in a country like the United States? Like the present, it would cover 85% of the cost. Private insurers would not be excluded, as they would be needed to cover the 15% difference. Medicare is strapped for two reasons. Its line item is included in the general budget, where Medicare is used as collateral in federal borrowing, and funds are diverted to other uses. Additionally, there is the crunch of the baby boomer generation retiring. So Medicare has to be broken out of, broken out as a dedicated account, financed independently through payroll taxes and other taxes to be determined, which will undoubtedly have to rise. And fee for service, fee for service payment must be replaced by patient first, where providers are paid for overall quality care of the patient. Well, in Northern Europe, it doesn't matter what the reason is for you to see the, the doctor or the surgeon or whoever. It, yeah. it, it's all, it's all uh, free. Yeah, but well, the Republicans say, yeah, but you have to wait. Oh, you got to go on a long waiting list, yeah, and then you could, waiting they're list. saying you could die on the waiting list. No, no, no. I don't. It's think. all for elective stuff. I don't think. And if you're going to go on a long waiting list or something, you know what they do? The U.S. pays for them to come here. So, that's right, exactly. Well, um,. If, uh, well, I notice, like, when I go to the doctor, the first thing they ask me is, uh, what, what, what do you need to see the doctor for? Uh -huh. Now, of course, they don't want to, they don't want to bog down their, their uh, patient scheduling with a bunch of hypochondriacs, you know, you know, for frivolous reasons. No, but uh, also, because of Obamacare, yeah. in these certain instances, now, the doctors want to do all their tests. They want to do the colonoscopies. They want to do the mammograms. They want to do this, that, and the other. Over testing. Thing. Over testing. Yeah. The, what bothers me, I don't mind. I don't mind if I give blood and urine for a complete test that way. But once you start mentioning X-rays to me, uh -huh. I, I I back off. That's right. I think. To an x-ray to to be exposed to radiation should be done only if it's absolutely, absolutely necessary. necessary like surgery that's correct get a second or, or third opinion don't go don't go to one doctor and says oh he wants to do sir like my relatives oh surgery is the only way and they listen to him and they go and get and then they get fucked up well also um, <clears throat> The and mammograms are the uh, that's what the, the doctors want to do and everything, but you can do thermograms, which are not right. 
which, which are not yes. uh, uh, harmful as yeah. the mammograms. You're right. Are. It's a it's a new it's a new machine. It's a new system. Yes, <laughs> but they don't know it, do they? Well, there's also uh, uh, I think they call a proton uh, uh, a proton machine for for cancer treatment uh, instead of hitting you with radiation. They use proton therapy, or, or, or the, the other one uses radio waves or something, right. and, and it works. It zaps the, the abnormal cell without damaging surrounding tissue. Well, that's you the know, whole point, though. You know, the chemo. It's right big, now. Big business. Doctors are getting kickbacks, you know, with the mammograms and all that shit. So uh, they don't bring about the change that should be taking place. You think place. doctors that um, push a lot of prescription drugs, you think they, they get like a commission for Absolutely. doing it? Absolutely. Or they get it for themselves. Let's say, let's say you go to your doctor and your doctor has a uh, MRI, MRI machine and he does his own MRIs. He's going to push that. Yeah, he's going to push that and he's going to get his cash for it. Because he wants to pay for his machine. Exactly. Yeah, and what about, what about the, uh, the uh, Lipitor craze with uh, high cholesterol? Yeah. They don't mention anything about what your diet. Right away they go to the Lipitor. That's right. And one third of all heart attacks have nothing to do with cholesterol. Actually, cholesterol okay. is, is, an, is a necessary... Uh, patch. Well, a patch. A necessary but, patch for the vessel. But it also is raw material for sex hormones. Well, that's exactly what it is, you know. Jeez. You know, the brain has a lot of cholesterol in it by nature. But they don't care too much about that because doctors have been given high blood pressure pills for how many years and they do. <clears throat> Listen, doctors... Down your sex drive. Doctors so. should go back to being old-fashioned doctors. Like caring about the patients they see and not being in it with a, with a lawyer's mentality, you mm -hmm. know, for the money. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Mm. The Hippocratic Oath and all that good stuff. Hippocrates. All right, Jack. How much damage can one person do to American foreign policy in a single weekend? Donald Trump seems to be determined to find out. It boggles the mind that our future president questioned NATO's value, suggested that other nations leave the European Union, placed German leader Angela Merkel oh, gosh. and Russian leader Vladimir Putin on a par for trustworthiness. Merkel? Continued his war of words with the intelligence community and implied that sanctions against Russia are negotiable. Yet, that's exactly what he did in the span of three days. On the other hand, Trump's nominees to head the Defense and Homeland Security Departments were impressive in their testimony last week, as was his choice for the CIA. The State Department nominee seems basically grounded in reality. I hope Trump will listen to them seriously when he occupies the Oval Office. Foreign policy is serious business. An effective president must cultivate allies, recognize the potential and limitations of American power, choose his words carefully. Those words matter and can have a lasting impact. The presidency is a profound change from running a family-owned business, and I hope he'll grow into it quickly. Otherwise, we face some very chaotic years ahead. Hmm. Well, I, I love this this sim very simplistic uh, banner I came across it says if you don't want your corruption to be exposed ever well don't be corrupt <laughs> <laughs> well that's putting it mildly isn't it yeah in other words don't blame 
the whistleblower that for uncovering you, yeah, that un that exposes you, yeah. You know, if you if if you're if you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing, don't do them. Well, it's the same thing. If you don't want to pay high tax, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Certain things are kind of uh, simple to, uh, you know, yeah. find answers to. Yeah, it's like, um, it's like somebody, uh, like the person who was nitpicking about uh, me getting off my chair, getting up doing, during the show and uh, saying, well, well, the people on, uh, you know, people on uh, mainstream shows, you know, uh, with all, you know, with these people uh, um, dressed in good suits and everything and state-of-the-art studios and sponsors and all that and, and high salary uh, they don't get up and, and, and go somewhere uh, during the video so what they're doing is they're not uh, they're not focusing on the content of our show no well they never do they're, they're well, what about sticky ass from sitting on so long but what are they doing <laughs> but you know the person who criticizes uh, maybe I should ask uh, what are you doing to contribute to a better, no, a to a better world, to a better country? I'm a critic. I don't have to contribute anything. A self, I'm a critic. A self-appointed yeah. uh, critique, a reviewer. Self-appointed. <laughs> Most of them are self-appointed. You know, like in pro wrestling, you had, uh, you had the few people that had crowns. You know, yeah. you had Ernie Ladd had a crown. They used to bring to her, he was the king. Actually, they used to use his crown in the Imperial Margarine commercial. Ah. Big Cat Ernie Ladd. Then you had Jerry Lawler, who was the, the king. king. Self-appointed king. Well, he was also the promoter of his territory. So naturally, he made himself king. You know, so you had every all these uh, self-appointed kings. And uh, you know what? There's way too many self-appointed gurus and kings and know-it-alls on, online. It really is. And I know a couple of them in person too, personally. Uh, uh, I buck, I buck head severely with uh, our announcer William H. Morrow. He's a know-it-all. He's a he's a he he does everything better than everybody else. He even said his razor blades are sharper than mine. I say my razor blade went two months. He says his razor blade went. Three I don't months. know. Ten years, or ah. so, whatever, whatever. He, in other words, everything yeah. he does better. Everything he has is better. Everything he knows is better. Well, hey, you must. Is open. that a narcissist? Yes, it is a narcissist, but it is uh, someone with an insecurity complex. Everything, everything they, okay. everything is better. Yes. When it when it applies to them, you don't know anything. Right. Yeah, but ba 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 ba. No matter what you say, but yeah, but yeah, ba, 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 ba. it's like they have to go one better on you. Well, in cases like that, they have to like steal I say, your thunder, steal your thunder. The person is insecure, so you must uh, you must kowtow to that if you want to remain friends. With <laughs> there, there's there's the magic question. You know? Yeah, there is the magic question. It's like uh, there hey. are certain pre people that will not educate themselves further. And if you want to remain on a friendly basis with them or something like that, you have to accept them, warts and all. Yeah, it's like what... Or the, you stop. You de depart. Uh, uh, yeah. what, like what this, uh, the producer, this Time Warner producer, former cameraman for Time Warner in New York State was telling me, you know, yeah. if, they're, if you have a guest on the show and they're, and they're an established entertainer, Mm -hmm. You know, you got to deal with their personality, with their, uh, with their, with their uh, personality defects, because they're they're the star. They're 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 entertaining. They're they're performing on your show, and uh, entertainers, like artists, I guess. A lot of them are flaky. A lot of them are egomaniacal. Mm -hmm. And and when they when they, hey, I know I know some people like that. Uh, uh, pro wrestling. Uh, it could be oh, uh, uh, any any form of entertainment. A hot looking chick. It's always uh, you, you can uh, you can hear stories. A hundred percent. You can hear stories about in opera. 
She was a diva. No, I mean, I mean, a hundred percent of what they post online is about them self promotion. Oh well, that's a that's a that's a punk. That's somebody who ain't really somebody yet. You I'm mean talking a about somebody? Somebody who is something like no, a great no, opera singer. In other words, a ham and a, In other words, a real a real big star doesn't have to self promote no, day and night, night and day. Of okay. course not. And if you listen to like uh, I believe it was Gary Noll. Gary Noll wrote a book on the, the uh, early movies and that sort of stuff. And if you you find out what the, some of those early actors and actresses were like, oh my God! Well, come on! And they couldn't. Some of them hated each other. Yeah. They didn't get along at all. Yeah. You, and it looked like they loved each other when they when when the director they were actors. Action, you know, but yeah, you know, uh, but I'm talking about TV shows, yeah, movie yeah. movies, TV shows. Yeah. And um, and uh, a, a lot of them were egomaniacal. I heard like Diana Ross was was a yeah, big, yeah she was. Big That's time. why the damn group split up. Well, she's also she dating, wanted to be the queen. She was also dating the head of Motown. You know. You know. I believe uh, that's how she got to start. The group got yeah. to start. Yeah, well, I mean, it, pettiness, stab, stab, backstabbing. Yeah, it, oh, of course. It's all pettiness. Everything's about me, 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 me. But hey, Kevin Cosner, who I respect a lot, he doesn't have to self-promote and and brag. People like him, they don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. Nicholas Cage, you know, people like that, they don't have to do that. Yeah. Well, hey. Yeah, hey, what are you gonna do? The other night in Ridgewood, New Jersey. About 200 people, mostly women, gathered for a pre-rally for the Women's March Saturday, which is today, in Washington, D.C. That's right. There will be three buses leaving from Ridgewood, three from Glen Rock, two from Paramus, and many more. And that's not counting the other regions of the country that were headed to Washington, D.C. New Jersey will be well represented. This is the first time, after an election, that so many feel compelled to speak out and do something. Where we might not have agreed with Ronald Reagan or George W. Bush, we never felt that an incoming administration was a danger to our core values. We well, never boy. had an incoming president who mocked the disabled demonized immigrants, bragged about sexually assaulting women, yeah. or attacked the Gold Star family, or one so thin-skinned that he feels the need to personally attack somebody on Twitter. Yeah, well, rights, uh, uh, rights of, of anybody in any group is really doesn't seem to be a priority. No. With Republicans or with Donald Trump. Oh, Republicans don't believe in rights. No, well, that's why they want to get rid of all uh, what we call entitlements. Mm, they're like fa they're fascists. Okay. Well, well, what about their entitlements? That's uh, okay. Uh, they they change the name so that it sounds like the Clear Skies Amendment or subsidies, which is allowing more arsenic and pollution into the air. Okay? Clear That's sky, what they do. Right to life unless you're born. Right to life unless you're born. Clear yeah. skies amendment. The right to work state. Exactly. It, they give it a positive name. There you go. A positive catchphrase. That's the right how, to work. Yeah. Meanwhile, the worker is does not benefit. No. no. Never benefits. It's a suck job all around. It's uh, uh, uh it, it's they're always anti union. 100%. Yeah, well, yeah. Because unions want rights. <laughs> <laughs> but the elitists don't want to give them. You know, it's it's an it's it's an age-old story. Go, going back to feudalism, monarchies, it, it's nothing new. It's nothing new. The war against the poor by the rich is nothing new. At no. all. Yeah, right, for thousands ahead. and thousands of years. That's right. With Republicans in complete control, such hard-earned civil rights as reproductive rights and LGBTQ rights will be in jeopardy.
Yeah, Mr. Lewis was upset there for a while, right? Yes, he called him an illegitimate president. Well, he didn't. He felt that you know all, all the blood, sweat, and tears and lives uh, uh, that it costs to to gain civil rights. Uh -huh. They're not about to turn back the clock and give up all of that. Our public school system is threatened. Millions might be losing their health insurance. Lax gun laws, such as national concealed carry and the right to carry guns in college campuses, may be forced upon us. Voter suppression and gerrymandering may worsen. And environmental protections may weaken. I am marching, along with many others, to remind those in power that with Donald Trump losing the popular vote by 2.8 million, we are the majority, and they do not have a mandate. We are marching to serve Congress oh, and President-elect Trump. Notice that we are watching. We will be calling and we will not remain silent. Hey, people like Paul Ryan and, and Mitch McConnell, they, they are loathsome scumbags more than ever before. You should have seen Paul Ryan's face yesterday marching behind Mr. Trump. Uh, what do you mean, he didn't look so happy? Happy? He looked elated. Elated! Because Trump is kowtowing to them. You know, Paul Ryan pretty much wants the poor to die. Uh -huh. Well, they all do. Mitch McConnell, they all do. They all do. They. Uh, when you look at their actions, of course. You know, uh, and and then and then if we have uh, real severe civil unrest and and revolution in the United States, then then they're going to wonder, oh, why are the people all turning? into violent hooligans. Oh gee, you wonder why? Well, their idea of um, <clears throat> revolution, they have been turning the views of their people in a revolutionary sense against the government, not against those who are doing wrong. No, it is the government. They always blame government. That's correct. Oh, a lot. There are so many political banners that are anti-government, but not one. No, I shouldn't say not one, but not many anti-corporate CEO, anti-corporate, anti-oligarch. I mean, they're out there. Don't get me wrong. And they are the biggest of patriots. These people. Oh sure. Okay. Hey, you ever hear of? Uh, there's a new new show on the Travel Channel called the um, the uh, the booze he's an yes, expert yes, on the booze traveler the booze whatever. traveler something yeah. like that he's a guy from uh, South Boston a former bartender whatever or bar owner and he's uh, he's a fu he's funny he's very funny and he goes on these expeditions and last night I watched uh, the show when he went to Siberia in in, in search oh, of this elixir of life this very ancient uh, Siberian tonic liquor, Ooh. and uh, he he visited you know uh, some guy who who herded uh, reindeer and you know uh, cut the antlers off for medicinal purposes. They, they, he says we don't kill them, we just wait right before the uh, deer drop their their rack of antlers. They cut it off anyway. Ooh. Long story short. Very entertaining, and you know, and you see a lot of uh, beautiful natural scenery on these shows, even with Anthony <laughs> Bourdain. And uh, uh, you know, he uh, you, you really you really learn a lot. <clears throat> and uh, I was going somewhere with this, no, and no. I lost my train of thought. Choo choo. And he was on a train in Siber Trans Siberian Railroad. Railroad. Yeah. He said something that was really. All right. Well, then, anyway. Let me finish this one more. All right. Here. Finish that. I Until I remember. To the newspaper to report the news and inform the reader. 
Trump tracker seems to go far beyond reporting the news or even informing the public. It appears to me that this approach to chart the results of policy is keeping book on the president-elect, waiting for the slightest misstep. This also has the appearance of being politically motivated in preparation for 2020. I hope that is not the case. After 18 months of downright ugly, harsh, divisive campaigning by both major parties, the American public is suffering from campaign fatigue. I just thought of what I was going to tell you. Well, well okay, finish, I, finish, finish. And up. absolutely does not need another four years of internal bickering. We need time to heal. I believe that the record, that's our local newspaper, should continue to report the news, but leave the tracking of the new administration to the public and opinion page. And um, opinions, uh, what are, opinions are like assholes, everyone, everyone has, has one. Yeah. Everyone has one. Yeah. All right, uh, uh, the booze traveler, Siberia. Mm -hmm. He went to the region where he had the uh, the privilege and honor of spending some time with the Cossacks. Ooh. The Cossacks, you see, I didn't know this about the Cossacks until I watched this show. That's why I'm saying these shows are great. You know, yeah, let me <coughs> salute the Travel Channel, man. Travel Channel and the History Channel. I salute you both, all right? Cossacks, they were, they started out of rebellion against the monarchy, the czars. That's usually they says the, the story. And they fought the monarchy not only from the czars, but the, the Turks in the south. I guess they were the Ottomans, Ottoman Empire. Ottoman Turks. Time. The Turks, yeah. and uh, they, they fought, they fought, they became uh, rebels that it, it, uh, went to, you know, that lived in the mountains, and they formed their own community, their own society, their own uh, nation, so to speak. They have their own uh, 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 leaders, political leaders, and they, they were uh, cavalry people and very, very proficient at the saber, using the saber sword. Horsemen. They were horsemen and they, uh, but the, the saber, they were like, you know, I mean, uh, you would think you're watching a Kung, a kung Fu, uh, 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 a Shaolin. I mean, they were very proficient with the saber and on the horse. When they, when, when they, uh, the boys became of age, they learned how to uh, put a saddle and ride horses. And uh, they, their, their creation was at a rebellion against the monarchy, which is very similar to what's going on today. The oligarch, the corporate oligarch uh -huh. is like a monarchy. It's like feudalism, it's similar. You know, uh, corporatism, capitalism, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. So that's it, we're gonna break for lunch, right? Yes, sir. And you're gonna see uh, our promo and you're gonna see the links to our web uh, pages. Mm -hmm. And um, at this point in time, I don't know, well, anyway, regardless, we'll be back with the rest of the show. Uh, you're going to see some information, so hit the pause button and read if you must, or you, if you wish. Uh.
Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. All right, we're back. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, everyone responsible for uh, such a wonderful promo. But we're back. Now let us sink our teeth back into these readings for this week's Progressive Discussions, the post-inauguration show. And... Mm. Uh, I guess uh, the next so-called ridiculous holiday coming up is the same Valentine's Day massacre on our wallets holiday. Yeah. There are legions of arguments for why America is not ready for Republican President-elect Donald Trump. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton 
and her Democratic team spelled them out over and over. And the anti-Trump protesters who shut down streets in a post-election catharsis would not let us forget. But much of America still is struggling with why Clinton lost. A question that begs to go beyond Trump's misogynistic comments and white man rage. Why she lost? People are still asking that. Despite all the money and all the advice, she could have run a better campaign. In anointing Clinton, the Democrats went all in with a candidate despised by a good portion of the country. High unfavorability ratings are hard to overcome, but that's especially true for a candidate whose detractors have had decades to practice their attacks. Well, a lot of things that Hillary Clinton said were uh, were not in touch with the little guy. They were they were anti little guy, you know. Yes, but her unfavorabilities, yeah. she never overcame them. Yeah, uh, yeah. right. The unfavorability uh, concerning everything else, like the right. emails and and uh, they uh, did uh, not uh, like her. The DNC. Well, they didn't like the DNC because they knew that. There was a funny business going on with the DNC in 2016. Warning signs of trouble came early and often in her campaign, but she failed to heed them. She was overly cautious, effectively staying on a course of political destruction rather than learning from mistakes along the way. How was she surprised by the Bernie Sanders search? She nearly lost the Iowa caucuses. She nearly lost the nomination. She lost Michigan to Sanders because he tapped into a vein of anger and despair. Well, Sanders, aside from the rigged primaries, despite Sanders' momentum. Uh, many Americans uh, uh, foolishly went for Hillary Clinton. But she thought she had it in the bag in the general election. Well, she, she won. She got the nomination. What did Clinton give Sanders and his followers for their fervor? She let him campaign for her. And he uh, did it, too. But she gave little reason for his followers to feel a full embrace. No, they, they, they did, want, did not want to accept her. No, they, because they're smart. But, but Bernie kind of left them hanging. You know, you don't, you don't start uh, the grassroots revolution and then, and, then, and then just give up and start... <laughs> Sure, Campaigning. she talked up some of his priority issues. Big deal. After she beat him, though, she had a chance to tap into his energized base, but she didn't. Oh, did she really? Oh, did she really beat him? Ah, a question mark that we will we will never know. Clinton badly miscalculated the political math. She didn't pick Sanders as her vice presidential candidate. An idea that was worked for rivals before, has worked for rivals. Well, for her to before. do that, she would have to be on the same page uh, with Bernie Sanders. Uh, excuse me. That's all right. I've done that, too. He, it's good enough for Howard Stern. It's good enough for us. Yeah, uh, she would. He, she would have to be on the same page as Bernie Sanders. And she, uh, her, uh, the people that were supporting her were not about to let that happen. And she did not pick Senator Elizabeth Warren, a Sanders-like fire bomber. Yeah, the gooseneck. With a large following. Old gooseneck was so 
enthusiastic about supporting uh, Hillary Clinton before the uh, Democratic National Convention and the nomination, before that she went with Hillary, turned her back on her friend Bernie Sanders. The feminist, gooseneck Elizabeth Warren, turned feminist. It didn't have to be Sanders or Warren, of course, but America was pining for change. Hey. Clinton wouldn't roll the dice on a running mate with far hotter hands on the pulse of young Americans. Hey, Martin O'Malley sounded pretty good, but I don't think Martin O'Malley was as far to the right as Hillary Clinton. I think Martin O'Malley was uh, more progressive than Hillary. He would have made a good running mate. Clintonites thought Bernie Sanders was too, well, Bernie. To Bernie? A guy who spoke of outsized dreams and criticized the too big to fail. They thought Warren was too radical. Or at least that she was perceived that way. Now you see, you see the uh, how, what happened to the Democratic Party? You see it, it went to the right. It went to the right because the fat cats were being uh, sucked up to. Besides, why take a chance on a double woman ticket? It doesn't look good. Uh, 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 Barbara Buono did that uh, when Chris Christie uh, won uh, the re-election for governor of New, New Jersey. Barbara Buono had a lieutenant governor who was female. It looks too d lesbian. Uh. It looks too, uh, yeah. Double woman ticket turns off the male voter. <clears throat> she made a safe choice with Tim Kaine, a guy known by too few outside the Washington, D.C. circle, and Virginia. Well, he's a Southern Democrat, so he is, he is more to the right. Kaine did not ignite the Sanders-stoked millennials. No, nah, he's kind of boring. In picking Cain, Clinton flunked one of the basics of political math. It's all about addition. Ignoring the crowd is a game of subtraction. By throwing the masses little more than a bone, she redefined modern-day political elitism. She expected to... She expected the spurned Sanders enthusiast yeah. to love her anyway. <laughs> but she didn't scratch them where they itch like Bernie Sanders did. She expected to galvanize the Barack Obama troops she needed and wanted. She didn't. Another corporatist, Barack Obama. Failing to fire up her own side only exacerbated how much she fired up her opposition. Yep. A pro-gun crowd got whipped up over her anti-gun position. And an anti-immigrant of color and anti-people of color crowd also. Christian conservatives eyed a Trump appointment to the open seat on the U.S. Supreme Court. Yeah, C Christian cultists, conservatives, I call them cultists, her incendiary basket of deplorables and other remarks flourished on the internet and fit into the narrative of people who spread an anti-Hillary gospel. Her words nourished the opposition, stiffening the resolve of the people who already felt pushed to the side, forgotten, broken by bad loans, layoffs, and factory closures. All right, go ahead. Big crowds turned out to support Trump. Sure. But Team Clinton didn't get the picture. Yep. Nope, nope, nope. The NC never learned its lesson. This affected Democrats who felt isolated from their party 
and fed up with gridlock, marched to the polls. Tired of the way things work, or don't work, they joined Republicans who found Trump distasteful but preferable to Clinton. They wanted help, not hope. Clinton's team can complain about the email albatross and blame her loss on FBI Director James Comey's late inning moves. No doubt his timing will be long debated. Well, Loretta, Loretta Lynch got scolded severely also. But it will be a footnote in history. Clinton would not have had any of these problems if she hadn't set up the homebrew computer system and used it. And plus, uh, her husband didn't help uh, by having a private meeting with Loretta Lynch on the plane. That, 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 that sent up a red flag. She can bemoan news coverage and scrutiny, but she refused to be accessible to the press and the public. Because maybe her, the puppet master uh, would not compromise. Meanwhile, Trump called in to talk shows, took advantage of victory after victory to give primetime speeches to viewers. Trump got tons of free FaceTime, non-stop FaceTime, because of his outrageousness. All of these issues undermine her and her minuses. Hillary Clinton was the most qualified presidential candidate in modern history. Too bad she ran a bad campaign. See, they won't give Bernie credit, Ber Bernie Sanders credit where it's due. They, they'll, they are, the person says Hillary Clinton is the most qualified candidate. Well, hell, Bernie Sanders has been a United States senator for like 30 years, right? Right. But because he's a democratic socialist, of course, they're not going to say he's the most qualified. Hey, capitalism was always rigged for the rich from day one since the Industrial Revolution. It has failed the masses, period. It proven fa proven failure. And oh, by the way, teabaggers, trickle-down economics is a big lie. President-elect, well, he's president now. Yes, he is. He's president now. President Donald Trump. Trump's meetings with CEOs seeking federal approval for major mergers are raising red flags for ethics lawyers. CEOs just couldn't wait to have that big meeting with the president. CEOs, the, the, the source of all of our troubles. Concerned about the possible erosion of a firewall between the incoming White House and regulators reviewing those billion dollar deals. Trump met this past week with the heads of German chemical company Bayer. Lovely and seed and herbicide company, Monsanto. Oh boy, he's uh, he's in bed with Satan now. Who made their case for their $57 billion merger. Oh my God. The deal would likely need to be approved by Trump's choices to the lead antitrust enforcement at the Justice Department. On Thursday, Trump sat down to discuss jobs with the chief executive at AT&T. Discuss jobs? Didn't they outsource all their... 
customer uh, inbound call center customer service jobs. <coughs> they're in the Flip they're in the Philippines now. I know. Which is trying to acquire Time Warner. Presidents typically keep their distance from such reviews so as not to appear to be exerting political influence on a regulatory process intended to evaluate the impact of a merger could have on competition and consumers. Trump's private session suggest he might be less worried with appearing to be close to pending deals that require government approval. While it's true, the Department of Justice is under the executive branch, it's not appropriate for the president to make that regulatory decision, and certainly not for political consideration. Bruce Green, a law school, a law school professor, equated the meetings to a 2016 campaign controversy. Bill Clinton's uh, conversation with Attorney General Loretta Lynn eh. on the Phoenix airport tarmac at a time when the Justice Department was looking into Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server. Mm. If the conversation is private, it will raise questions and suspicion. Uh, especially since he's the husband of, the, of Hillary Clinton. ATT specifically denied talking about its proposed $85.4 billion merger with CEO Randall Stevenson. They met on Thursday with Trump. The company said its conversation focused on how it could increase its U.S. investment create jobs and make American companies more competitive. Trump's choice for Attorney General told senators this week that incoming administration, that the incoming administration would be transparent. The antitrust policies of the United States have to be consistent clear as possible. Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions said at his confirmation hearing. Now, no wonder he's an evangelical zealot freak. He's from Alabama. I didn't know that. He's from the Deep South. What a, what a bunch of freaks. Well, they, they don't know the first thing about the Bible. And how come he was a, a racist in Alabama? Along with George Wallace. Oh, and, uh, he was around when George Wallace was uh, oh, yeah. doing his thing? Oh, yeah. He was one of the Demdar, uh, was he a Dem one of the Demdar Dixiecrats? Uh, no, I, I don't think he changed parties. He, no, he was just uh, a racist Dixie evangelic -y Republican. Right. And this is the guy that Donald Trump selected, or was he forced to select these people, huh? Could have been forced, yes. Could have been forced. Yes. The during the campaign, Trump opposed the combination of the telecom, AT&T, and Time Warner, the media conglomerate that owns HBO and CNN. The meetings are part of Trump's aggressive unorthodox strategy for job creation in which he openly cheers or jeers individual companies.
he's shown himself willing to intervene in even relatively small corporate matters. On Thursday, Trump tweeted that people should stop, excuse me, shop at Maine retailer L.L. Bean. Why? Why pay all that money for clothes? After the Associated <laughs> Press reported that heiress Linda Bean had contributed to a pro-Trump political action committee. Who the fuck cares? Heiress. R I mean, she's rich. And that the company was facing calls for a boycott. Please give me a break. Multiple lawyers told the Associated Press that the meetings with companies under antitrust review by the president were unusual, though not necessarily unethical, as these meetings could be considered a form of lobbying. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, what do you have your thermostat on anyway? My thermostat is on 72 all winter. That hot? You got it on. No that one, is not no hot. One did a helicopter went on and, and muffled uh, my, uh, our show. You got it on high, man. 72? It is not high. Jeez. We have ours on um, 70. How many rooms you got? A whole bunch. Oh, you don't. What a big liar. No, I got one. How two, many cubic feet? Three. I don't know. Well, I don't out. give a shit about cubic feet. One, two, three, four, five. And not counting the bathroom and the hallway. Five rooms, not counting the bathroom and the hallway. Five rooms. All not right. counting the bathroom and the hallway. Well, where's the cold room? We have baseboard heat. Uh, huh? Where's the cold rooms? We got a lot of baseboards. We don't have any cold rooms. Cold rooms. What the fuck is a cold room? With five rooms at 70, you're going to have cold rooms. The hallway and and the corner room where my mom, uh, her bedroom had only has one baseboard on one side. Uh -huh. I would say, I wouldn't call a room cold. I would say the hallway, which doesn't matter because it's in the middle of the house. Well, well, anyway. Yeah, anyway, regardless, we have it on 70. All right, listen. Uh, uh, like like uh, my sister says, if it's uh, on seventy, and you got the chills, put on a fucking sweater. All right. All right. Continue. Before, I do anyway. Before your helicopter goes on again. I do anyway, and it's on seventy-two. Boom, 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 boom. Sometimes I wear just a scarf. Sometimes I wear my pants. You. I think. I think. I think your insulation here. Yeah, at the, I don't here, have no insulation. Here at the Newsletter Censored Research Center, I think my insulation rivals yours. So I think you probably need that extra oomph coming from your furnace. But anyway, I don't want to get into furnace discussions. Change of pace. Tomato paste. I am a 23 year old woman. Ooh, manja manja. And I know I should have a lot more patience than I do right now. The old schlong. I am happily married with two beautiful children. Oh, poo. That takes all the eroticism out of it right there. After work, when I return home, I'm fine for the first hour or so. But if my children start to get loud or keep asking me to do something, I get extremely aggravated. Well, sure. Kids are selfish, man. They don't stop. They don't stop. My children are young, and I love them. Uh, well, of course. She's the mother. But I should be more in control of my temper toward them. No, no, no. You should uh, give up this modern, uh, uh, young, modern uh, parenting, and, and, and you have to let them know who the alpha is. The kids will, will walk all over you. I feel so bad when I lose it, my temper, and shout at them. Oh, you don't want to traumatize the poor little thing. And this way he'll, they'll grow up to be little self-centered monsters. 
What can I do to improve this? Oh, excuse me. I need to take a nap. Hold on. This is dear Abby's answer. I bet dear Abby's going to say, negotiate with your child. I am glad you asked. Because it is important that you learn to relieve your frustration without taking it out on your children. So she's anti-spanking. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha, dear Abby. There are healthy ways of managing frustration without exploding. The first, recognize that you are becoming upset. Leave the room! And if your husband is home, yeah, where's, where's, go for a walk. Where's, where's the father? You know, uh, men, uh, uh, young parents today, men have lost their, their spine and their balls. I see fathers just letting the mother take care of the kids. Oh, yeah, you take care of the problem. You take care of the discipline. They don't do shit. Go for a walk or a short run to help you regain your perspective. Another technique is to stall before reacting. Pause. Say a prayer. Please, Lord. Don't let me lose my temper. Abby is a, is a nut. Before opening your mouth. My booklet. The anger in all of us and how to deal with it contains a number of healthy ways of dealing with frustration and other negative emotions. It can be ordered by sending your name and mailing address plus a check or a money order for $7.00 in United States funds to Dear Abby she, she had to say in US dollar form she had to you know, she had Anger to. Booklet P.O. Box 447 Mount Morris, Illinois 610 Shipping and handling are included in the price what about taking away the children's privileges, allowance, and luxuries that they may have in their bedrooms? Punishment! Without kicking their ass, it could be done. Take away what they love the most. And including dessert, by the way. I hope it will be helpful to you. It's important that you get a handle on your temper so your children won't grow up thinking that verbal abuse is a normal way to handle their own. Emotions. When they're being bad, they have to be corrected. You know what? You're an ultra liberal, dear Abby. You're wrong. This is why you, we got a bunch of monsters and hooligans running around today. Anyway, that's about it, right? What do you think? One more. All right, one more for the road. I don't know when we went from the traditional peaceful transition of power to the tension of the present day. Uh, awaiting the inauguration of President-elect Donald Trump. Are some young adults so self-centered that they feel as if they have lost a loved one? I guess it's their own fault for raising a generation of spy spoiled young adults. Maybe we should honor those who didn't vote for Trump with a trophy for casting a vote in the first place. <laughs> After all, they were treated with trophies and rewards for only attending the contest. Participation awards. <laughs> and competing as youngsters. They are not used to losing. There comes a time of recognition. Knowing that the reality of the moment may mean feeling hurt. Then adulthood reigns true, and you go on with the business of the day. You attend school, go to work, perform the tasks for which you are being paid. It's a hard lesson to learn, especially when some members of Congress choose to boycott the inauguration. Well, the Americans had the worst options political options in the history of the United States, I think. Republicans are reveling 
Democrats are reeling. The pendulum is constantly swinging. Will the revelers and reelers be reversed with the next election? Uh, next election. Yeah, next election. Will Congress respect the office of the President of the United States? You know how much damage could be done in four years? Will this generation behave like good lads and lassies after they've lived for four or eight more years? Only time will tell. You know how much real hard-hitting truth and information was put online before the November 2014 election? People didn't learn, learn from that. Nobody learned. Nobody learned. Because the imbeciles kept on electing and re-electing, so on and so forth, the same right-wing conservatives just went on and on. I think term limits is a, for everybody is a fantastic idea. Well, we have term limits. Yeah, but well, what about these... Uh, Two years for Congress, six years for our senator, four years for a president. Yeah, but... If you well, don't like them, vote them out. Why are, there, why are there congressmen and senators that have been there for... 30 years. For 30 years. Yeah. Explain to me that. Because their dopey people keep electing them. In other words, they can con continue to run for re-election. Yeah. Whereas a president of the United States only has two terms. Yeah, he used to have one he could run too. But the uh, Republicans did not like uh, FDR being voted in four times. FDR would have, um, well, if he didn't die, he would have been a, 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 a a mummified. Uh, he would have been the f would have been the first mummified president because people loved them that much, mm -hmm. you know, and, and for good reason. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that Truman did a bad job. I, I, I from what I um, I learned from the documentary, uh, Truman was not uh, briefed. Uh, nobody helped Truman out for the job of presidency when. Uh, FDR died. You know, he was just thrown into office. And I think I think it was I think it was Truman who started the law that every new president has to be uh, updated. Has to have a, that special meeting. Well, Mr. Truman <coughs> gave a list of his worst and best presidents and he thought that Dwight D. Eisenhower was was one of, was one of the worst. Yeah, but uh, the, the nation prospered under Gen General Eisenhower. Well, he didn't like him. You know, I mean, General Eisenhower stopped George Patton from uh, going into Russia after Stalin. Patton wanted to continue against the uh, Soviet, which would have, uh, if the United States would have won that, would have prevented the Cold War. Mm hmm from taking place uh, afterwards, mm -hmm. you know, with Nikita Khrushchev and all that stuff. So, yeah, yeah. And all the countries being taken over there, like Czechoslovakia and uh, Slovenia. The sat what do they call that? The, the Soviet the satellites? Soviet satellites, yeah. Yeah, the uh, Ubikistan uh, and Tajikistan and all the stands. Stan Laurel. Stan Laurel and Hardy, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, um, Absolutely. What do they call? Uh, they call the um, the right wing voting uh, uh, southern uh. and western part of America. They called it uh, a dumb fuckistan. Doing a show. Hold on. Anyway, I'm going. We're going to break. I mean, we're going to end the show. Thank you for joining us for progressive discussions for this week. Have a good weekend. Yeah. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.